Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I wanted to study the Euclidean algorithm that we use to compute GCD of two numbers A and B. In particular, I wanted to show to you that the performance of this algorithm is in polynomial time. This is basically what we did. I proved it why these two things are equal in the previous segment, okay? So I will not prove this again. So we will take this as a fact that was proved, okay? So we also assumed this GCD of 0, 0, 0, which is correct in uh, universally. Some books, uh, GCD of 0, 0 is not defined. In some books, GCD of 0, 0 is 0, okay? So I will follow this GCD of 0, 0 is 0, all right? So the question now is, if you have a program that uh, computes GCD of A and B using this definition, let's say that if, if this is the definition, we can live with this, for example, for a moment. Uh, it doesn't matter what I put A or B at the, uh, as the beginning. Um, if we assume this definition, that the question is how many iterations, um, how many recursive calls uh, we will have to make before the algorithm converges to an answer, okay? So uh, this question seems to be somewhat um, challenging to, to reason about. It's not really clear um, how many iterations this program will take, okay? Um, so I'm going to shed some light on this problem today. Okay, so first of all, I need to bring some interesting theories to you uh, so that we can make use of that when I, um, when I prove it, okay? Uh, just recall this important fact that GCD, um, let's, let's remove GCD, um, a mod B, the value of A mod B, when, when you take a number A and divide it by B, let's assume A is uh, greater than B, okay? I am going to assume A greater than B, okay? So what is the value of um, A mod B bounded by? It turned out that we can bound A mod B uh, by A by two, okay? It makes sense if you think about it. If, uh, if, um, let me prove this now right away so you can convince yourself this is true. Um, let's consider the case case one, uh, B is less than or equal to uh, A by two, okay? So in that case, um, we, we always know that A mod, A mod B is a value between zero through B minus one inclusive. That means A mod B is always less than B. Okay, we have already assumed B is less than or equal to A by two. Okay, so that so we achieved this part. Okay, when B is less than or equal to A by two. Okay, now consider the case two that um, B is greater than A by two. Okay, all right. When B is greater than by A by two, what is the meaning now? We remember A is greater than B. So how do we define A mod B then? It's just A minus B. Makes sense, right? So, what is the a, what is the value of a mod b? For example, if a is say um, ten and b is six, just subtract. That's enough. Um, uh, this particular value is uh, less than a by two. Okay, this this is pretty much clear because we we assumed b is greater than a by two. Okay, that means minus b is less than minus a by two. So, from a you are subtracting a by two. That means you get this answer. So. We proved that in both cases that A mod B is bounded by A by two, okay? That's an interesting, important theorem that our proposition, we will make use of it. Okay, our fact. And um, now we will run some basic Python programs uh, to study um, how our program actually behaves for different A's and B's. So we can draw conclusions about the um, number of iterations we would need. Okay, so let's get there. Uh, my GCD program, which we discussed earlier using the Euclidean algorithm, right? I'm going to trace it. I, I, I wrote a little wrapper to trace it. So let me trace the GCD of say 12,8 and enable the trace. Okay, so how many and uh, B becomes A mod B of the previous iteration, okay? So this is pretty clear. Let me quickly recall why it's happening like this. Um, it's happening like this because we define GCD of, um, um, of GCD of A comma B as GCD of the small value B and then A mod B, okay? This is what we did. And that's the reason why we have the code looking like, and the output looking like this when we trace it. So we got three iterations and then we are done, okay? 
So let's think about this problem now. Um, when um, when we run it on a large numbers, okay, let's take two prime numbers that I know are prime because I got it from RSA numbers somewhere, okay. So let me take two prime numbers now and show to you that we can actually compute the uh, the number of uh, steps it's taking. Um, compute the GCD of these two, okay. Um, let me do one more thing. I need to enable the trace uh, and the trace records how many times I'm calling the GCD function recursively. So um, I have something called dot um, uh, iteration. I set it to zero. And now I'll do the GCD trace of A comma B and we will see what happens. Okay, so of course the the numbers that we tried are large numbers, but still you can see very quickly we got the GCD, which is one in this case, because both numbers are prime. Therefore, there are no common factors, of course. And the answer is one. But I wanted to show to you something important now. Take, for example, any row you like, okay? I'm going to take a simple example here. Let's say I take uh, this particular row. Okay, A is 17, B is five. Um, what is interesting is that if you, if you take one step up, meaning go two levels up, um, you see B is 39 here, right? B is 39 here, but the new B is five. That's drastic, okay? We quickly drop. Um, that's an important insight. Let's take 39 and then look two steps up. Two steps up, you see here 134, and then we dropped to 39, okay? Even um, smaller than half of the, the two steps above, okay? So now let's take, take 134 and jump two steps up. You see here, it's 363, which is, if you go down two steps, the values of B are also at most half of the value, okay? If you take B to be 363, the next, skip the one intermediate one, then what you get here is 134, which is smaller than half of uh, the, the 363 value that we compared. Okay, so why do I say this? This is the key. The key is to reason about how fast the value of B is getting to zero. That's basically the reason why I'm showing you this, okay? And now we can think about it and formalize it more precisely. Okay, let's do that. A1 mod B1, okay. All right, that, that's how the recursion proceeded. Okay, now let's make use of the fact that <clears throat> we learned an interesting relationship as I had shown earlier. A mod <clears throat> B is bounded by A by 2. 